this video is gonna look a little different because today we are breaking someone out of jail. Just kidding, don't call the police. I have had this idea stuck in my brain for three, I almost held up six fingers. <laughs> I have had this idea trapped in my brain for three years now, and today we are finally busting it out. My, my big idea, idea is to make the most, I'm trying to think of adjectives, the most whimsical, wonderful, fantastical winter tea party you have ever seen. Now, if you think you're getting this the easy way and I'm just gonna plop it in your lap, think again. We're doing this together, so I'm gonna take you along for the entire process so we can plan together, put the menu together, together. You get the point, it's just, we're all in this together, okay? And if you're thinking, I didn't sign up for this, I just wanted to like watch you do this thing and then move on with my life, well, too bad. Also, please don't abandon me. I don't want to do this alone. Together. It'll be fun. Well, it's been three years. Let's not wait a minute longer. Let's get into this and start planning. My name is Bethany and this is Joyful Habits. Winter is here. Now, depending on where in the world you live, winter could look very different for you, but where I live, we have all four seasons. So for the most part, winter is very snowy and very cold. I know many of us can struggle with winter for various reasons and cannot wait for the season to end, but I decided many years ago that I was no longer going to wish my life away. I didn't want to wish my week away waiting for the weekend, and I didn't want to wish entire months of my life away waiting for the next season. And this idea was part of the inspiration to begin the Joyful Habits channel. I wanted to find and share ways that we can enjoy every season and every day that we're blessed with. Hence my catchphrase, you know, adding a touch of whimsy to the ordinary and to every season. One of the ways I make every season fun is to create seasonal bucket lists or plan seasonal activities that I can look forward to. And this winter, I decided to finally dust off my idea to host the ultimate whimsical winter tea party. This would be something that would keep me occupied and also help me to celebrate and enjoy the winter season. Okay, so we have the idea and now we kind of just gotta like put it all together. So when I initially got this idea, when I was making the snow crystal candy, which if you saw that video, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it here. You should go check that out. <laughs> it was kind of a disaster. It looked so pretty and I made this little winter tablescape on the table and then put the candy out and I was just like, wow, this would look so pretty. A winter tablescape for like a winter party or a winter tea party, etc. So that's when it began. I mean, before that I wanted, actually that's not really even when it was born either because I need like a freaking timeline here. So basically, I had the idea that I wanted to do like a winter themed something, like a winter party. Then I did the crystal snow candy, which is what really kind of like sparked it again. Then fast forward to now, or not really now, at some point this year, the other day, I found this at a library book sale. Don't focus on my finger. It is Samantha's craft book. It's like a vintage American Girl doll book. And I was intrigued. Um, it was 50 cents. As you can see and by the price tag that I haven't removed yet. I should remove that. Anyway, I was slipping through it and... What the heck is it? Maybe it's like not even in this book. Gosh, am I just like insane and making all of this up? I swear it was in this book. I'm gonna find it. You just wait. I can't find it. 
Did I just make all of this up? What the heck? Okay, ignore everything. It's not even in this book. I mean, this is still a great book. It's got lots of fun, like, little ideas, but not the idea that I was about to tell you. So, um, one moment. <laughs> I gotta look through my other books. Okay, I'm back. I think it was in this other book that I got. Also an American Girl doll book. Um, lots of gems in these old books, I'm telling you, for uh, like ideas and inspiration. Okay, so let me just make sure it's in this book before I show you the book. I still can't find it. What the? Oh my gosh, I'm feeling like maybe I just fever dreamed all of this. Okay, one second. We are gonna solve this mystery. You'll understand. So basically, I, I thought it was in this book, and I thought it was in this book, and it's not in either. I know it was in this book. It's in one of these books. Okay, it's not in that book either. It's not in that one either. Oh my gosh. Please like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> okay, we're going to check one more book. And if it's not there, I'm just going to tell you the idea and assume that I fever dreamed the whole thing. So... Okay, um, disregard everything I just said. Like, these are still great books, but I cannot find the idea I was looking for, and I swear I found them in one of these books. So I don't know what the heck is going on, but... Apparently, I just imagined the whole thing. So my idea was to make ice cream look like snowballs, round scoops of like vanilla ice cream, roll it in coconut, or to just sprinkle them with like a little bit of sugar to make it look sparkly like snow. Wherever that idea came from, that was like the third thing that really made me want to do this. Made me want to like, okay, we're going to make this a video because I've been thinking on it for a long time and I've been slowly gathering inspiration and uh, coming up with ideas. So now it's time to put it together. So first thing I do is grab a notebook and a pen and it was something like this, like an idea that I've had this long. I've kind of been keeping a running list. So now what we need to do is look at this really long sloppy list of just random nuggets and ideas and inspirations and sort of make it coherent. So decide what ideas are we going to use. And then once we finalize everything, we need to kind of come up with a grocery list or like a supply list. To make this easier, what I do is I break up the ideas into categories. For instance, I might break up, you know, like menu items. So it's like, okay, this is a menu item idea, this is a menu item idea, this is a menu item idea. And then anything that has to do with tablescape or decoration would be another category. Then I go through my house or my things and start to kind of take inventory and look at like all the props or random items or dishes that I already have. Decide from there, what do I need to add to it? What do I need to go to the store for? That's what we're gonna do. So just to walk you through kind of what I have now for a list of ideas, I'm definitely not going to be able to use all of these just simply because time, you know, I do work full time and have a lot going on. So it kind of puts a limit on me sometimes to like, you know, I got to like tone it down. Like my idea is like this big and I have to like bring it back down to earth a little bit. But these are all the really fun and cool ideas that I did come up with for a menu. And even though I'm not going to necessarily make all of them, I wanted to share all of them. The ideas in this video, you can literally apply it to, you know, a birthday party, a tea party, just a get together, a Christmas party, fit it to your situation. So some of the ideas I came up with include a creamy potato leek soup, because soup is nice in the colder months and I thought the color would look nice like a nice white cream soup some kind of cake obviously lots of directions you can go with that I came with the idea that we could do uh, snowflake shaped sugar cookies mini tea sandwiches obviously it's a tea party oh my gosh i have a really 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 exciting idea to do a winter themed punch bowl i was at a local consignment shop and i found a gorgeous giant punch bowl with a glass ladle all of the punch cups, the punch cups, I don't know if that's what you'd call them, but all those little cute glass cups for 15 bucks. I picked that up with the idea that I would use it for this video. And finally, I'm gonna be able to use it 
Obviously the crystal snow candy, I think would be a great idea. I think I even mentioned it in that video. You know, looking at this footage, I'm getting major like snowy, wintry tea party vibes. So maybe in the future I would host a winter tea party and maybe find it in myself to try making these again and have these out on the table. I just think that'd be really aesthetically pleasing and kind of cool. Again, if you've watched that video, you know it was a bit of a disaster and I just don't know if I want to try making it again. So I might just cheat and buy like rock candy or something. I'm still playing with this a little bit, but I had some ideas for uh, special ice cubes, you know, do something special. Uh, still kind of brainstorming that one. And I also had the idea Fill a glass with like a little bit of water to here and then they like stick a sprig of rosemary or something and then freeze it and then when you pour your bubbling whatever later it just looks cool. Kind of thinking of playing with that a little bit and trying something similar. Vanilla macaroons would be another idea. You could just take pretzels and dip them in white chocolate and put those out. I had the idea of like crushed ice or like a snow cone or something. Thought that would look very wintry obviously because like you're eating snow. White Powdered donuts would be another one, mini marshmallows, popcorn. I don't know. I was really just trying to think of all the foods that are basically snow colored. Like I said, made a list of like menu ideas that I just read to you, table decor, activities, party favors. I don't really know if I would do party favors for this. Uh, just some little ideas I came up with was like snowflake shaped soap in like a cute little bag, a wintry ornament if this is kind of near the holidays for you, little homemade candles. So yeah, I had a couple ideas with that. Again, don't really know how much of this is going to happen for this party just because of time. Being an adult, it's hard sometimes to balance your adult responsibilities with all the fun things you want to do. So yeah, I do try to think of activities for the guests to do, you know, things to keep uh, the atmosphere lively or keep people entertained or just keep the laughs coming. You know, it depends on the situation. Like for this tea party, we're mostly going to be focused on just enjoying good food, enjoying good company, a good conversation. So I'm really just looking to make a very like relaxing and pretty environment with good food. If you're interested in uh, this kind of topic, by the way, please let me know in the comments below because I actually really love hosting parties, themed parties. In the past, I've you know hosted harvest parties, murder mystery dinners, Christmas parties, you name it, I've done it. I would love to add that to our very large list of future video ideas to share with you. I'm back. So I received a package in the mail today with just a few items that I ordered for our tea party. Luckily, a lot of the things I'm going to be using for this party I've already ordered in the past for other videos or other events or things that I just kind of found at a consignment shop. So I didn't really need to order too much, so that was really nice. And yeah, but I thought I would share with you what I did order. These are handmade doilies, but they came in a whole pack. So look at that, so cute. But look at they have all kinds of different designs and shapes. So there's like large, medium, and then these. This is really what sold me actually. Um, these is look at these little baby ones, and they look like snowflakes. So how perfect is that? So yeah, I mean, I mean, you can see like the size differences between. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like lit and big and medium and then little and dropping them everywhere. Really happy with these, to be honest. I mean, it came uh, in, in not very expensive and just give you an idea. Like, look at how many I got. I mean, there's tons. So, yeah, um, no specific plans for these other than to just use them to decorate. You know, whether we like put one of these under the teacup or the water glass or just sprinkle these around the table. I also like getting things like this because I know that not only will I use it in this video, but I know I'm definitely gonna use it for like a hundred other things. So if you like doilies, definitely check this one out. Um, like I said, it's linked in the description box below. So this next item, I actually just kind of keep around the house anyway for general use. They're tea lights, but specifically, I really like beeswax tea lights. It's supposed to be a little bit better for you when you burn them versus some of the more like chemically candles. So here's one that I've already 
kind of been burning. And to go with that, I found these really cute tea lights. They came in a pack of 12, I believe. So yeah, really pretty. It's literally the perfect size for the tea light. Like, it fits the tea light perfectly. Again, I was happy with these because I'm just gonna end up using these around the house anyway. And then I can pull them out for a variety of videos and events and things. So yeah, but this is really pretty. I already lit this one. Actually, I'll light it for you now. This may end in a disaster, so stay tuned. Oh God, I'm right below my smoke detector. Oh God, I'm right below my smoke detector. I really hope that doesn't go off. If that goes off in a minute, it's gonna scare 10 years off my life and I apologize for your ears. There's the, uh, the candle. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, pretty happy with it. And like I said, this is nice because it's just kind of like a practical thing that I could just use around the house anyway. So the next two things that I ordered have to do with the napkins that are gonna be on the table. So I found these really cute little like hankies that are embroidered. I thought these could be really cute napkins because they have just, you know, that little bit of blue. It, it kind of fits with that wintry theme, the little bit of lace. Uh, so my one idea was just to literally like put this on the, whoa, put this on the plate, right? Or, or just kind of like have it set under the teacup. But then I kind of liked the idea of a napkin ring. I had lots of ideas for what to do with a napkin ring. That's when I found these. You can see here it's like the pearl with the silver and I don't know if I'm just gonna use like a traditional napkin and have the you know napkin ring I guess I could do both like that doesn't look terrible right you know something like that so yeah it kind of depends once we decorate and do everything and I kind of see where we go with this so yeah that's everything I got in the mail today luckily I like I said didn't really have to order too much because I have a lot of stuff already I will have to definitely go to the grocery store and get a few groceries, obviously, but I'm going to wait until I'm ready to film making all the food and stuff before I do that. Let's move on to the next part of the video. Okay, I am really excited because now we are on to the fun part. We get to actually make stuff. So I didn't show this before because I had not found it yet. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> But I found this snowflake mold and I thought this would be so perfect for making ice cubes. So I'm going to fill it with some water and throw it in the freezer and yeah, we'll check those out in a bit. The next thing I thought I would use it for because it came in a pack of two is to make some chocolates. So what I did is I mixed some white chocolate with some coconut oil, melted that down, poured it into the mold, and threw it in the fridge to harden up. I'll admit I'm not a huge white chocolate fan, but I can't deny white chocolate obviously fits our theme, so white chocolate it is. Now as I'm filling these molds, you'll see I'm obviously not a professional chocolatier, and you would already know that if you saw my homemade chocolate Easter eggs video from last year. So yeah, I'm a bit messy. If you can be less messy, that's cool. But basically fill the molds, once you've got them filled, you'll notice I'm kind of like picking the mold up and slamming it down a few times. That's just to get the air bubbles out and let all the chocolate settle. And then because I totally overfilled the molds and made a mess, I just used a butter knife to scrape the excess off the top. And then, like I said, threw it in the fridge to harden up. Okay, next up are our tea sandwiches. Now, I just went out and found the most basic white bread I could find because, again, fits the aesthetic and it's also just easy to work with. So what I do is I use a cutting board and a nice sharp knife and I just cut the crust off the bread. Then I'm putting my hummus on. You can put whatever you want on these sandwiches. I just decided to go with hummus. And once you have your sandwich, you just cut it diagonally and there you go. Now, a few tips on what to do with all those bread scraps. There are a lot of things you can do. If you're having soup for dinner, you could dip them in the soup and enjoy them that way. You can make homemade croutons, you could make breadcrumbs, you could make stuffing. And if you have a certain Mr. Squirrel running around your yard who happens to love bread, <laughs> you could uh, throw some scraps out to him, which is what I did. So Mr. Squirrel is very happy. And if you have no idea who Mr. Squirrel is or what the heck I'm talking about, then you should definitely check out uh, two of my autumn videos, my walnut ink video 
and my autumn pen pail with a squirrel video. <laughs> and that will explain it all. Alright, it's been a while, so let's check our ice cubes, because if they're done, I want to put another batch in the freezer. And I think they're done. Look how well they turned out. All the detail. I really, really like this. Such a simple thing, but I'm just really excited to have snowflake ice cubes on the table. And speaking of snowflakes, let's see how the chocolates turned out. And I think these turned out great too. Again, I love the detail. I think these are going to make a really nice addition when we start decorating the table. All right, and next up, huh, the snowball ice cream idea. That one I was trying to find in the book, which I did finally find. Now, all this is is literally like a scoop of vanilla ice cream, and I'm going to decorate it with a little bit of sugar for sparkle and a little bit of coconut flakes. I thought about how I would make the ice cream a perfect circle. At first, I kind of thought I could just do it myself, but then I was picturing myself trying to roll ice cream into a ball and how messy that was going to end up being, how terrible it was probably going to look, so I decided not to try that. So I went online and found these molds and I think these are going to be a lot better. So they're half circles, so what I'm going to do is just fill them with ice cream and then put two of the half circles together and then we'll have our snowball. So go ahead and just fill those with vanilla ice cream and throw them in the freezer until we're ready for them. So now on to the invitations. Now usually I would make something like this by hand, but this time I decided to design it on Canva and have it printed there. This is not sponsored. Canva does not even know I exist. <laughs> But yeah, I've used Canva for a lot of things, uh, thumbnails and different things like that. So yeah, I was like, hey, I bet I could design an invitation. And I had them printed with Canva. They came with really nice envelopes, so I was really happy with that. But of course, you know, I can't just leave it alone at that. So what I did is I found these really nice wax seal stickers online. They came in a pack of like 100. And yeah, we're going to attach those to the envelopes. And then I just took a little silver marker and filled in the snowflake so it would stand out a little more. Now the backing to these wax seals, you can peel it off and it's sticky like a sticker. I decided just to use a little dab of hot glue and that way the person could like open and close the envelope without having to rip it off. Now this probably goes without saying, but um, if you're planning on sending these through the mail and you have the wax seal on the envelope, definitely put the envelope with the wax seal into another envelope. To protect it because otherwise it could get destroyed in the mail sorting machines. I'm fortunate that I'm handing these all out in person so I don't really have to worry about that but yeah just a little reminder. The next thing I have here is a bunt pan that I found at a consignment shop. Super cheap. I think it was five bucks. I decided to make a white cake and then later on we're going to powder them with some powdered sugar. Here's that punch bowl I was telling you about that I found at the consignment shop for like 15 bucks. Best, not the best find actually, because I've, I've actually found some really good things at consignment shops, but one of the best finds. Yeah, like I said, it came with all the cups, the ladle, the tray, the bowl, really good condition. So I was super, super happy to find this. Now we're going to have the main table that I decorate, but I decided to set up a secondary side table that would have the punch bowl, maybe the cakes, and you know a pitcher of water or just a few extra things and that way the main table doesn't get too crowded. So the next thing I did is I went to a local florist and asked them to put together a sort of winter themed bouquet and this is what they gave me. I was really happy with specifically the white roses and the baby's breath. That was my favorite. So yeah. I thought this party was special enough that it, it called for real flowers. <laughs> and the next thing I'm trying, this is really crazy, but I saw this idea online a long time ago and I've just been waiting to use it. And it's that you mix warm water with borax and then you dip things in it for like an hour and when you pull them out they'll be all crystallized. So I'm doing one flower at a time in case it totally doesn't work, but I thought wouldn't it be so cool to soak the bouquet of flowers and then have literally like crystallized glittering ice looking flowers on the table. So yeah, stay tuned. We'll see how that turns out later. So I'm starting here with just trying to figure out the base layers of the table. 
I started with this tan tablecloth, which you probably recognize because I think I've used it in literally every single video at least once. So it's like one of the best tablecloths I've ever bought. And then I had this white runner, so I put that down in the middle, but I felt like it needed just a little bit more dimension. So I found this old lace curtain that I had in my... So I have this huge pile of blankets, tablecloths, runners, curtains, placemats that I pull from whenever I'm doing stuff like this. So I had this just one random lace curtain and I thought, well, if I just kind of run it along the table, you can't even tell it's a lace curtain. So, yeah. I liked how that looked. Next up, we're going to put the main dishes on the table. I really love this tea set that I found. I've linked it below for you. And I thought about originally going with just white plates and white cups and white everything but then I thought well that's too much white there's not gonna be enough contrast so I started to look around for something that had some blue in it but like not too much and this is what I found and I thought this was perfect so I put the main plates on the table and then layered the dessert plates on top and then started putting out the teacups Next up, I have these really nice water glasses. Again, I found this at a consignment shop for like $4. They were like a dollar a piece. And uh, yeah, they're really nice. They're very heavy, like high quality. I don't know if they're crystal, but they kind of feel like it with the design. And I thought these were elegant enough to go with our tea party. So next up we have the champagne glasses. I can't remember. I either got these at a consignment shop or from a family member who was getting rid of some extra dishes, but I unfortunately only have three <laughs> of the ones that I like. So three of them look very similar to the water glasses and I think they look a little more elegant. And so I was really happy with that, but unfortunately I didn't have a fourth one. So the fourth one I have is just like a cheap one that I found somewhere and it doesn't quite look as elegant or match, but but it's okay, I don't think anyone will notice. Or everyone will notice, because now I just pointed it out. But whatever, I don't think anyone will care that much. Except me. So next up, I'm pulling out all of those doilies, and I want to just kind of start placing them around the table to decorate with. I thought, because I have all the varying sizes and they're round, that maybe I could put them under, you know, the water glass, the teacup, the champagne glass and super happy. I think this looks really good. Next up, we have these really cute little ice cream dishes. Once again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but I found these at a consignment shop as well. It was a set of six of them for like $3. And they are so cute. They're so tiny. They're like the perfect size for our, you know, snowball ice cream creations that we're gonna make in a bit. And next up, we're gonna start putting the napkins out. Now, I had debated whether to use a normal linen napkin and just sort of fold it and put it on the plate or whether to use a napkin ring or whether to use the little embroidered hankies I found. In the end, I decided to use the normal linen napkin and put a napkin ring around it and I was so happy with how this looked. A lot of times with this stuff, I'm really just sort of making it up as I go. Every once in a while, it's just, you have that spark of genius. You just, you do something and immediately it's like, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. And you're super happy and it's like light bulb moment, epiphany, hallelujah choruses in the background. And when I put these napkins together, that was definitely one of those moments for me. I mean, look how beautiful they look with the plates and everything. And it's just, ah, oh, it just looks so good already. And we're not even done yet. So I liked everything so far, but I felt like I wanted to add a little something to sort of pick up on the blue in the dishes. So I went back to my scrap pile of just, like I said, tablecloths, fabrics, etc., And I found this blue fabric that I actually bought for a summer video that I've been trying to do now for like two years, but life keeps getting busy. Uh, maybe this summer we'll finally get around to it. 
But until then, it is now coming in handy for this video. And I just sort of wrapped it around the lace curtain as, you know, along the runner. Yeah, I thought it was nice to add just that little extra blue to kind of pick up on the dishes. And next up, we have these little... Gosh, my brain just went completely blank. What the heck are these things called? Little place, you know, tell you where you're supposed to sit. Anyway, I'll remember it later as I'm editing and be very frustrated with myself. But anyway, these are actually left over from my wedding and they've just been sitting in a drawer for a while. So I thought, let's use them up. Next up, I'm just putting the silverware out. And yeah, I am really liking how this is looking so far. It's really coming together. So then I decided to pull out those little tea, candle tea light holders uh, that we looked at earlier and just start placing them around the table. I decided to sort of place them along the runner zigzag, so sort of every other, you know, side as it went down. And then I just started putting the tea lights in. I will say, as much as I love beeswax candles in general, I was a little annoyed <laughs> with how yellow they were. I felt like it kind of clashed with just all the white and the theme we were going for but again that's just me being really nitpicky so yeah maybe next time I would have used the white tea lights just for this this one time but again I'm just being really nitpicky so then I was just pulling the rest of the tea set out and filling the sugar bowl with some sugar cubes and making a mess <laughs> I'm trying to fill the creamer literally just poured milk all over the place yeah, and just getting that all set up, put some hot water in the teapot. And now we have a massive stain, <laughs> wet spot on the tablecloth from where I spilled the milk, but I've already set so much stuff on the table, I don't want to have to take it all off to clean it, so that stain's just going to stay there. <laughs> so next I put this tiered tray on the table and started pulling out some of the foods we had prepped the day before. The little tea sandwiches, I went ahead and bought some of these little powdered donuts. And then I pulled out those white chocolates and put those on top. Then this was really random, but I had these Christmas ornaments that were just snowflakes. I thought, why not just sort of lay them on the table along the runner? And yeah, so it looks like there's a snowflake on the table. So I liked how that looked too. When I was looking through my box of winter stuff, I found a Ziploc baggie of the snow candy that I had made in my video like, I don't know, two years ago at this point. I guess I worked so hard to make it, I didn't want to get rid of it. Obviously I'm not going to eat it, but I was like, you know what, I'll just tell people don't eat it, it's just for looks, it's just the aesthetic, <laughs> and I'll put it on the table. Besides, in that video I literally said it would be great to do a winter tea party and have that on the table. So I feel like I kind of have to honor that video and have it in this video. And then I pulled out the rest of those little mini doilies that kind of look like snowflakes and just started scattering those about the table. Just sort of filling in here and there. And now we're moving on to that little side table I told you about. This cake tray, I love this cake stand. It has like roses engraved in it and it's glass and it's like really heavy and good quality. And you guessed it, I found it at a consignment shop. So yeah, super good find. I've used that for quite a few parties and events that I've hosted. So I pulled out the little mini cakes that we made and now I'm just powdering them with some powdered sugar. I don't remember where I got these paper doilies. I think I bought these a couple years ago for another tea party that I hosted, a summer tea party. But I thought I'd just kind of use them up and put them under the water pitcher and such. And then I had the idea to dress up the cups a little more by dipping the rim in some melted white chocolate. As you're sipping the punch, you're getting that like sweet white chocolate taste and it also just looks cool. Unfortunately, I burnt the chocolate. It was not melting nice and smooth like I had hoped and therefore when I tried to dip it, it was just not working. And then that was also the last of the white chocolate I had. So as a plan B, I decided to dip the cups in some honey and then dip it in some powdered sugar, like a frosted rim. I was really happy with how this looked actually. It looked really good. And again, this is just me being nitpicky, but later on you'll notice that the honey kind of starts to drip down the cup, which is fine. But because the honey has that yellow 
color I felt like it kind of clashed with our color scheme and again it's not like a big deal it's just me being super nitpicky but I think if I did this again I would maybe use I don't know my brain's blanking right now but just I would dip it in something that's not yellow just something to keep in mind if you do this maybe if you don't want to use honey but again it's just me being nitpicky because overall I was super happy with how it looked all right, and now it's time to make our winter themed punch. Now, this is a recipe I found online. It is Sprite or Lemon Up or whatever you want to call it, soda. And then you add some fresh lemon juice and then vanilla ice cream and some sugar. And then I had some extra powdered sugar, so I decided to just sprinkle some of that on top. I thought maybe that would look nice. So yeah, that's pretty much what I did over here was the punch, the cake, and the uh, pitcher of water, which by the way, I found that pitcher, that water pitcher at a consignment shop for like $2. So I felt like it needed a little something more, so I added a few tea lights with the doilies, and then I also decided to use those embroidered hankies that I found as just extra napkins. So I laid those out on the table, lit the candles, Next up, I decided to start pouring the drinks. I decided to use some sparkling water instead of just regular water, just because bubbly stuff looks fancier. <laughs> and then I decided to take one of my extra invitations and display it in the middle of the table. Then I changed my mind and decided to just lay it on the table because then I also thought maybe it would cover up the stain I had created when I spilled the milk. Then I had some of this fake snow that I used for my Christmas village and I thought I could just kind of tuck it around the vase of flowers and you know the bowl that had the you know rock candy in it which by the way, the bowl that the rock candy is in, I also found at a consignment shop. I have six of those, and those were also like a dollar a piece. So there's a lot of things on this table are from consignment shops. And then I started pouring the ginger ale. Grabbing another one of these little dessert bowls, pull out our snowflake shaped ice cubes and display them in the middle. And then I went around and put one in each glass, two in each glass, maybe three. All right, and now I'm really excited for this. Let's see how our snowball ice cream turns out. I was first of all really surprised, pleasantly surprised, that these little dessert bowls that I found at the consignment shop were the perfect size for the mold that I got to make the snowballs. And once again, I just put two of the halves together and put them in the dessert dish. And then I decided to sprinkle it with some sugar just to kind of add some sparkle and then a little bit of coconut flakes. And you might have forgotten, but remember we were soaking one of the roses in borax to see if it would crystallize and mixed results it worked but it didn't so unfortunately i put too much borax and it wasn't deep enough for the rose to just sort of float in the water so what happened is it was touching the bottom of the bowl and then got completely encased in the borax and then when i tried to pull it out it kind of like ripped the flower so yeah that didn't work but if you look at the rest of the rose more toward the stem and some of the the uh leaves and such you'll see that it did actually work. It's all crystallized, it kind of looks like snow. Now at this point, party was like ready to go, so I didn't really have time to try it again with more water and then put the rest of the flowers in it. But in the future, if I do something like this again, I'm definitely going to try and soak the entire bouquet of flowers and maybe a few other things on the table because I love the idea of a sparkly crystallized flower bouquet in the middle of the table so 
yeah, definitely give it a try. It does work, but uh, just watch your ratios. Like, make sure that you have enough water that whatever you're soaking is floating in the middle and not touching the bottom. Also, remember that borax can be irritating to your skin, so just wash your hands afterwards or make sure you're wearing gloves. All right, my friends, so I think we're ready. I think we've pretty much done everything we were planning to do, and we've decorated the table, the candles are lit, the drinks are poured, the food is ready. So... Now it's time to enjoy a tea party. I hope you're all having a lovely winter so far and whether you're planning a fun winter tea party like we did today or simply taking advantage of the slower season to catch up on some much needed rest. I hope whether busy or slow that you find ways to enjoy the season and every day that we are blessed with. Because every day really is a blessing even if it's not our favorite season. And I want to thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did putting together this whimsical winter tea party. And yeah, I just, I hope you had fun and were inspired. And maybe you'll try something like this with your family and friends. Honestly, I wish I could invite you all over for tea. And, you know, you could jump through the screen into the video and we could have a lovely afternoon together. But since we cannot chat in person, let's chat in the comments. I want to know what your favorite element of today's tea party was. Was it a certain menu item, a decoration? Let me know because I really do want to know. And I would love to hear any fun ideas you have that I didn't think of. Or is there anything you would have added or done differently? Any tips or tricks? Let me know because I am all ears. Oh, and let me know if you plan to host your own winter tea party because that would make my heart so happy. <laughs> and let me know how it goes. Remember, I've linked as many items as I could in the description box below, so if you saw anything in this video that you want to use for your own tea party, you'll find a link below. Oh, and most importantly, did you enjoy today's video? If you did, I would be very thankful if you would take the time to like the video, and if you're not already, please consider subscribing and hanging out with me again. Also, let me know if you would like to see more party planning videos like this one. I have many more really fun ideas that I would love to share with you. Like I said, I've hosted quite a few parties, you know, tea parties, themed parties, and harvest parties, and murder mystery dinners, and I think it'd be really fun to start making some videos on those and sharing them with you. If you agree, let me know uh, that that's what you want to see, and I'll start planning some more videos like this. Well, thank you again, friend, for hanging out with me today for the entire chaotic process of putting together this whimsical tea party. Yeah, I just, I hope you had a lot of fun. I hope you were inspired, and I hope I put a smile on your face. With all that being said, my name is Bethany. 
This is Joyful Habits, where we daydream and add a touch of whimsy to the ordinary. I'll see you soon, and until then, keep smiling. Bye, friends. Thank you.